Hey everybody, welcome to Buzz Warby TV, and I'm your girl, Lady T. And tonight, we're talking Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. So let's get into it. Tonight episode actually picks up from where it left off last week with, you know, Tierra, Masika, Hazel, and Nikki. They're all at the unveiling of the um, billboard for the strip club that Masika is the face for. You know, she's the face of Ace, y'all. Get it right. You know, she thinks that this is about to be her come up. You know, this is the ish. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, but the way Masika was going on about this billboard, like, she was the model for... I don't know. I want to say like Vogue magazine or somewhere like she was a spokesmodel for like Mercedes Benz. You're a model for a strip club, girl. But whatever. You know, get it how you can get it, girl. But anyway, Masika and Nikki, they confront each other at the unveiling. And of course, they keep doing cheap shots at each other, which I'm so sick of, you know. They just want to continue to act childish, which I don't know why y'all still sitting over here and y'all feels about this nigga, Molly Mile, who don't even want y'all. That nigga been gone. Where the fuck he at? Why y'all still over here arguing and shit? Please let me know where he at. Anyway, Nikki even was like, I take you off the billboard. Like she got that much control. Like, girl, get a clue. I don't know. I don't know about none of these people on this show, y'all. I'm just going to be honest. It's only a couple people that I'm pulling for. And I'll get to that in a little while. But anyway, she threats, tells her, I can throw you, you know, I can get you removed from the billboard. And basically, Masika's like, bitch, please. Anyway, then we move on to Fizz and Amanda. Amanda tells Fizz that... You know, she met up with Monice, and Monice attacked her. She pulled her hair, and he says, you know, that was out of order. I'm going to talk to her about it. And she was like, no, you're going to more than talk to her about it. And he like, what you mean? I'm going to more than talk to her about it. And I agree with Fizz. What the hell you expect him to do? Beat her ass? And what really killed me is, in the confessional, she goes, this is the problem. Anytime I need him, he's never there for me. I need him to stand up and be a man and stop acting like a little boy. Bitch, if he did what you wanted him to do, he'd be acting like a little boy. Because it sounds like you want him to take it to another level. No, he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's going to talk to her and, you know, get her straight. All that extra shit. All that extra shit is unnecessary. You need to grow the fuck up. Because one minute, I just don't understand her. Let's just backtrack, y'all. She is really getting under my skin because she whines about everything. Like, she thinks everything is about her. First is, oh, I'm not ready to commit. I'm not ready to be a parental figure to your son. Now it's, I want you to check that hoe. Check that hoe. Like, everything revolves around her. That's, that's the majority of the reason why she couldn't be... A parental figure to his son after being with him off and on for a couple of years. Because it's all about her. Bitch, grow up. Anyway, then after that, we have April and Amari. They're walking. And, you know, April's just telling Amari, you know, that she wants to, you know, talk to her mother. It's a lot of things that she needs to get off her chest. You know, they don't have the best relationship because basically her mom abandoned her and she says that she sees, you know, Fizz. I mean, sorry. Sorry, I don't know why I'm saying Fizz. She sees Amari and his mom's relationship and she really respects and loves how close that they are. And she wants that from her mom. She wants to at least bridge that gap because her mother basically abandoned her. She wants to know, like, why... You know, you left me. Why well, wasn't raised with my sisters? And, you know, as far as her dad goes, her father was incarcerated, so she really didn't have that parental structure. And I'm just proud of April because it takes a strong woman 
to sit back and say, you know what, I'm about to have my own child. So let me reflect so I don't make the same mistakes that my parents made. And I really applaud them. I just think Amari and Ava are just a beautiful couple all the way around. And they are really too good to be on this show. Mona Scott Young, I'm proud that you're showing some functioning adults and a couple that ain't for all the fuckery. But, yeah, they too good to be on the show. But I do love seeing them, you know. I do love seeing them on it, though. I love their love. <laughs> okay. Then we move on to, to Nia and Soldier Boy. Y'all, let me tell you. This was some... Oh, my God. This was some fuckery. Because they're talking. You know, they're supposed to be getting ready to move in together. And Soldier Boy tells Nia... I think we should pull back on moving in together because I'm going out of town. I'm going to be, you know, overseas for two weeks. Not two months, not two years, two weeks. And he want to pull back from moving in together. Nigga, just say you don't want to move in no more. Just say, hey, I spoke too soon when I asked you to move in with me. And I'm sorry. All these fucking excuses. Oh, my security going to be with me. Oh, I don't live in a gated community. And I'm just thinking of your safety. No. You want to turn up and you want to continue to fuck bitches. That's what you want to do. Just be real. I'm just so tired of these niggas on this show who... Want to have all these damn excuses and want to keep these women on the street. And I just don't get it. Like, if you want to fuck a whole bunch of hoes, just say that. Don't be having it on the screen, uh, on the string and coming up with all these damn excuses. You don't want to commit and just say so. Jeez. Then we got Ray J, Youngberg, and Sincere. They are hanging out. It's the night before Ray J sentencing. And they just basically <sighs> just catching up and just venting. You know, Ray J tells them about what happened in the police car and how he got arrested. And, you know, they get to talking about Terry Marie. And Young Bird tells, you know, Ray J that, you know, he hooked Tia Maria with a song. It's going to be a hit. And he was like, you know, you don't mind that we're working together and, Right there, like, no, nah, do you? That's what I think about men. Men don't be tripping about the little shit. I will say that. But he did tell him, which was funny as hell. He did say, you better watch out. You see, she like to put her hands on people. She put her hands on me. She put her hands on Sincere. You next, bro. That shit was funny. Because she do not have no problems. Kenya Moore could learn a thing or two from Tia Marie. Kenya Moore always talking about, I'm from Detroit. I'm from Detroit. Tia Marie will show you. Kenya Moore, what is what it is to really be from the D. I'm just saying. Then we got Nikki and her mom. <laughs> they looking at Masika's billboard. And of course, <laughs> Nikki is in her feelings and she wants Masika off the billboard. And, and her mom is like, well, I can't do anything about that. That's business. You know, the owners of the strip club. That's their lease. They're entitled to have whoever they want. You know, it's their thing. But she did put a smile on her face because she shows her Masika's mugshot. And I'm just like, to Nikki's mom, do you have a man? Because you all up into your daughter's personal affairs. Like, even when she was going through her thing with Molly Ma, she, Nikki didn't even get a chance to really confront Molly mom, because her mama did all the fucking talking. So I'm going to need her mama to get some dick of her own. I'm just saying, like, jeez. Then we have... Then we have Monice and Fizz. You know, Fizz is telling Monice, you know, you were out of order for what you did to Amanda. And basically, Monice is like... I'm not apologizing. She ain't right. She came at me all disrespectful. And I want her away from my son. I don't want her in and out of my son's life. She's not ready to commit to you or my son. You don't even need to be dealing with her. And basically, he tell her, you can't tell me 
who to be with, and you're not going to dictate what I do in my life because you're not around. And as long as no, as long as no one's bringing harm to our child, then you will really don't have no say so. And I agree with him because, bitch, you not around. You sitting up here again looking fly as ever, and you don't have your son. When do you have your son, Monice? While you sitting up here checking, bitches, go get your son. Dang. Like, I don't get you. You're getting on my nerves, and I don't like to talk about women and how they parent, but it's just really irritating. You sitting around here checking hoes, getting into it about his relationships, but why you ain't getting into it about getting your son? I mean, because at the end of the day, you talk about your son, but you more so using it as leverage. I like this. Like when she was talking about, I should be able to come over when I want to because he's my son. Like... You use that as a scapegoat, as a way to, like, get in of some sort. And I don't like that. Then we have Ray J sentencing. You know, they got to be all dramatic with it and play the slow music. And he's riding down the street and he calls Princess and he tells her that he got probation. He has to have anger management. He thanks her again. For being there, holding him down, whatever. I'm just so sick of Ray J. He's just so immature, and I just want him to get it together. He acts like he's 18 years old, and I just got, I just need him to realize that he cannot be the turn up king forever. He really, he just really doing too much. Then we have Tierra and Nikki and Mosika. Tierra has the girls get together because she's basically tired of them arguing. Over Molly Ma. When Molly Ma is the reason why, you know, they don't get along. He's the one that's been lying. He's the one that was fucking both of them behind each other's back. I mean, so she don't understand why they just can't be civil. And initially, it's cool. You know, Nikki tells, well, actually, Masika tells Nikki that her problem with Nikki was that when she tried to tell her about Molly Ma, Nikki called her a liar. So that was her problem. But anyway, they start... Going back to exchanging stupid insults about plastic surgery and mug shots. I just need them to grow up because this nigga don't want y'all. This nigga been gone. And y'all still arguing. Like, y'all give women a bad name. I don't know. Y'all just need to grow up. So many people on the show need to grow up. Anyway, then we got April and Amari. They're getting ready for their baby. It was so sweet, you know, she's in labor, and everybody else is waiting downstairs, waiting for the new arrival, and he's just there, and it's just her, him, and the birthing coach, and they're doing this home birth, and he's just being so supportive, and I'm just so, I just love them together. Um, They really are doing that thing as a young couple, and I really like that. Then we got Ray J and his daddy. He wants to meet with his daddy because... He feels ashamed. He's ashamed of himself. He's ashamed of, you know, the bad publicity that he's brought to the family and to the Norwood name. And so he just wants a little guidance from his father. So he meets up with his father. His father, you know, just keeps it to him real. He's like, you are in a war with yourself and you're losing. And he's right, Ray J. You are losing big time. I'm going to need you to have several seats and just move side and reflect because all this stuff is going to get you in some real trouble. And I don't know what you want. I don't know if you, you know, if you need to go to a couple of AA meetings, but I need to get you, I need you to get it together. And then it ends with the beautiful birth of Amari at April's beautiful baby boy. Oh, y'all, it was such a sweet ending. Anyway, I was not expecting that on Love and Hip Hop. That sweet ending with the birth of the baby. I was really happy for them. So anyway, that was the episode, y'all. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Oh, and before I end this video, so y'all know, Young Bird got fired from Love and Hip Hop. Mona Scott ain't playing with these people. She done made another one disappear. She let y'all niggas know, don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with my money. You cause trouble. 
you go. Let all these people know from Love & Hip Hop. That goes for ATL, New York, and Hollywood. She firing y'all hoes. But anyway, that was it. Till next time, y'all. Peace and love.